So as we already mentioned, sodium iodide was found to be very bright. How do we define bright? So brightness in a scintillation material is technically referred to as light yield or photon yield. And it's a matter of how much light is emitted when it's exposed to radioactivity. Now for sodium iodide, that's roughly 45,000 photons, 45,000 photons of light per, per 1,000 kiloelectron volts of energy, of radiation energy. Um, and we'll say 45,000 photons per MeV, million electron volts. With this amount of light, we're able to perform a spectroscopy that well, previously was unachievable. Sodium iodide is still used for standard as comparing the brightness of other scintillators. They're all compared to sodium iodide. And usually it's a matter of a plus or a minus percentage compared to the brightness of sodium iodide. Now the light from sodium iodide has an emission wavelength, we'll call it 420 nanometers, 420 nanometers. So this puts the range of the visible light in the blue range of visible light. It happens to make it a very good match for bialkali photomultiplier tubes. This is very convenient. They work very well together. Now, besides brightness, the next property is decay time. And decay time works like this. Photons of light flash when they're struck by a gamma photon, and then some time has to pass before the bright flash is able to dim and decay to a point that the light can flash again when it's struck by another gamma photon. This is the decay time, the decay constant. So the span of which light dims sufficiently to flash again is often referred to as the speed of the material. And sodium iodide is still considered uh, very fast. At 230 nanoseconds, sodium iodide is a very short decay time. It's still among the fastest scintillators, well, besides being a fast material. Sodium iodide is also considered very dense at 3.67 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, so what's this mean? What does density have to do with it? Well, density is an indication of how tightly packed the molecules of the material are. And this helps determine how well the material can absorb gamma photon energy. The more density, the more dense it is, the more slowing occurs of the photon energy, the better absorption, and then the more scintillation light is generated. Ultimately, it's this property of denseness that means we get better measurement results. Now, sodium iodide also has another property that I want to mention, and that is uh, well suited for high temperatures. In fact, for a broad range of temperatures, really. But it performs very well in environments with relatively raised temperatures. One example would be, for instance, downhole well inspections and measurements. And this ability to perform well over this range of temperatures means it can operate in various conditions. It makes it very well suited for mobile applications where it's going to be changing from one temperature perhaps to another temperature. So it's still one of the most used scintillation materials for mobile applications. And there are more reasons why sodium iodide is still in high demand. And we'll talk about some of those reasons. Keep watching.